Yeah, so for you, you know, obviously coming over from the Detroit Lions, I think uh, it really ever since I I was playing, Hatch was playing, and even after that, you guys haven't really, you know, well, I can't say you guys anymore, but your team, uh, that city hasn't really seemed to get over the hump. Obviously, Matthew Stafford there, obviously they had Calvin Johnson, a great receiver uh, in him. Um, he ended up retiring early, and even prior to that, they had Barry Sanders. What do you think? Yeah. What do, you, what do you think it is that uh, about the Detroit Lions, the city or what have you, uh, that's, that's unable to really get beyond, I guess, that stigma of being sort of like the whole, like back in the day, it used to be the Saints. You know what I mean? The Saints, Aints is the Saints. And, and yeah. just the, the, being the bottom of the barrel, what is, it, what is it about Detroit that you feel in your assessment, or your opinion, as to why they haven't been able to progress and get out of this mode of being like, one of the worst teams in the league? Uh, mainly because, man, I think we have we got bad timing down there for some reason. Uh, shoot, my 2014 year, we was the number two, number two defense behind uh, Seahawks, and we was a playoff team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact that, you know, at that time, you know, the defense was kind of carrying the team a little bit, and, uh, and Stafford won Stafford he is today. So, you know, if we had that Stafford that's playing like 2017, 18 mm. staff right now, we'd be a different mm-hmm. team. And, you know, uh, yeah. so, when, so when the defense went away in 2014, uh, next year we lost Sue, you know. So it's like um, my thing is I just think the Lions don't never – I ain't going to say they don't want to win, but they don't know how to keep a, keep a whole solid team together, you know. So as mm-hmm. in, you know – like how the Seahawks was. The Seahawks, you know, whatever it took to keep them that back end together, they did it for the longest they can. Cause that's, mm-hmm. that was their strong suit. And you know, at the time my D-line was our strong suit and we ain't keep them boys together. You know, we let Sue go, we let Nick Fairley go. And um, and, and at that time it was kind of hard to try, to try to replace them two guys cause them boys were very dominant. And then, uh, and, you know, so we're back in rebuilding character, you know, so mm-hmm. uh, every time it felt like we was in a rebuild mode and, um, I think that was different because every time we're losing the key thing and we're not keeping the whole, the whole thing together. And um, yeah. so it, it's no getting no used to, it's no, it's no figuring yeah. out. And uh, so, yeah, man, that's what I feel like it was mostly it's just always been bad timing and not trying to keep the team together. Right. So now with the expectations, obviously you going from that, that situation, that market over to the Philadelphia market, um, obviously is a big difference. Um, what 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 are your expectations? I can tell you when I left San Francisco, and that's what I was alluding to earlier. When I left San Francisco, going to the Philadelphia Eagles, I already knew kind of what they had in tow. When you talk, when, as you were alluding to, when you talk about uh, a defensive unit that was kind of just a staple that was connected, yeah. um, they were together. They had all these guys that that were the nucleus, especially on the back end. They had Brian Dawkins um, right. up front. You know, they had Jeremiah Trotter. Uh, they had Hollis Thomas, all, Corey Simon, now all these guys. So defensively, they were they were intact. And so for me, I came over and just added uh, another explosive element to their offense with the quarterback in Donovan McNabb. They had uh, at, at running back Correll Burkhalter, uh, receivers. They had Todd Pinkston. So me coming over from San Francisco, obviously playing against them for for a number of years, I knew that the expectations were really really high. So you being who you are, obviously. One, one of the top corners in the league. Those expect trust me. Those those fans, they know who you are. They, yeah, they they, they, they know. They've done that. They've done, <laughs> they've done their homework. So they're coming in. You going in there? They're they're expecting big plays out of you. So going into uh, this season, what are your personal goals? Your expectations? Then you know, obviously, there are those team goals. What what do you expect? Because as Hatch alluded to, there's those fans. They're very passionate. There's very. like the there's the Eagles fans, the Dallas Cowboy fans, you have the Raiders fans, but I played with some of the top franchises in the league. There's nothing like those fans in Philadelphia. Oh, man. Believe me, I know. I know when I came here last year, boy, playing against them, they can't, they was not there snapping on me, you know, all kind of everything. But uh, shoot, my expectation is to come in, man, fit in, and do what I, do what I need to do, man. You know, give my all. I got to do every week, uh, play my hardest. You know, I don't put no uh, expectations on what kind of year I'm going to have, you know. I'm going to be, whatever the Lord bless me with, I'm going to be grateful for it. So, uh, but I know one thing they go get from me is a hardworking guy and a guy that's going to go out there and compete. And I'm, you know, <laughs> well, they need me to do. Uh, I've always been going against number ones. They need me to do that. And that's what I do. 
Yeah. And, you know, I'll travel, follow, wherever they go, I can go. It don't matter. Uh, I'm just here for the job, man. And I, and I love to compete and I love to go against the best. So, uh, like I said, mm-hmm. whatever they need me to do, I'm ready. And I'm there ready to is. go. Sure. Well, speaking of you going up against ones, you know, this guy, this old man over here, just he always talking, right? And he made a comment <laughs> last week oh, yeah. before you I got on. No, before you got on, saying, you know, well, he thinks Slay he can have get some that work. success that, you, that he go work you. So Slay will get that, that that here, work. here's the situation, Slay. Slay will get right. That hold, work. hold on, T. Hold on now. So you got, <laughs> you got, you got the old number eighty-one with the Eagles, Mister Owens. He put that jersey Ooh, on in that green, him. right? He got, he got his, he got. Let's say he got McNabb at quarterback. So he got somebody who can throw on the ball, and you go out there on the island. Out of ten reps, how many catches T.O. get right now at forty-six years old? Right now, right, right oh, now, man. right now. Right now, at forty six year out of t- out of ten reps, how many catches you give him? If we in the field, he might catch three. Now red <laughs> okay. zone, red zone, I might give him maybe five, maybe, maybe. Okay, because you know okay. he a big body, he he knows how to use the body. But okay, we got T. field. Uh uh-uh. uh. Three. T. How many? How many? You? How many gonna have? How about out of ten? T. I'm 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 at least seventy to eighty percent. At least seventy to eighty percent. <laughs> At least 70 to 80 percent. Hey, hey Slay, you hear this dude? You hear hey, this dude? Hey, he old hey. man. You gotta treat him like an hey, old man, man Slay. Hey, hey, trust me. <laughs> hey, they all had that, they all had that mindset, that those ideas until they, they see one thing on film, and then when it's in, when it's live, <laughs> it's a whole different animal. It's a, I'm a whole uh, different animal. They don't un- they underestimate that speed because when you look at film, you're like, oh my God, okay, I can do this. Or they see a little tendency here and there. But I mix it up because, like I said, I know how defensive coordinators they game plan. And so me being the smart person I was, I knew that defensive backs, if I if I thought they were really, really smart, I knew that they were going to defensive game plan well because they look at little tendencies here and there. So, again, every – Every, every game is not the same. Like, every defensive back is not the same. And I'm sure he can attest to every receiver is not the same. Right. So, again, it'll probably be, like I said, he, he plays me one time. I go against him one time. It'll be one way. Then, obviously, the second meeting will probably be a little bit different. He might need a little help. The well, we, we ain't, we ain't talking. We ain't, no, we, I, first we're, of all, we're, messing up. First we're not talking up game time situation. We're talking one-on-one. That's all. Oh, you got that's, one-on-one. Oh, that's, that's a wrap. You already know. You already know. <laughs> hey, you already know what it is. If I got you at quarterback, oh, that, I might take a couple of ke- couple wow. catches away because wow. he can't really throw. But I give I give him a little. And trust me, I give him a little head nod here and there. He can throw that thing a little bit, but once that little pistol arm, little once I get once weak, I get tired, I can't throw oh, no more. Slay, you know what I'm saying? I, but but the uh, first half hour, I'll, I'll be I'll be slanging that thing. Oh yeah, he's slanging. Yeah, he's slanging about the first 30, 45 minutes. Anything after that. Everything uh, is I'm new. I'm noodle arm. I'm noodle. <laughs> no, nah, man. But uh, we, I, I've been watching you, man. You're a great defensive back, man. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed because a lot of guys, when I hear about some of the top corners in the league, your name don't really come up. Is that because of you know you're in Detroit, you're not really getting the notoriety, this and that and the other? Yeah. Obviously, you're getting those personal goals with the accolades. Obviously, you're going, going to the Pro Bowls, three straight Pro all Bowls, Pro. Yeah. yeah, you're all, you know, all Pro. There's a lot of that again. Is that because of the, the market that you were in? Got to be because uh, I'm my 2017 year. Uh, well, that's shoot, when you, I, led, you led the league in interception in 2017. Yeah, 17 and PBU. So I had double with everybody in picks, uh, hmm. double double PBUs, 26 of them, eight picks. And, oh, wow. And still wanted to call the name as like the best corner in the league in 2007. I said, that's crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's a numbers game. This is a numbers game. I know it's speaking. I was doing what everybody else wanted to see. Mm-hmm. I was following number ones. Uh, I was, a, I was right. a travel corner. I was, I was seeing the best every week, and I'm and I'm out here putting up numbers like that, and I ain't considered the best yet. Y'all got to mm-hmm. stop right. this, but uh, <laughs> it just all I did is maybe, <laughs> it just made me, uh, you know, ground harder, man. You know, what I'm saying? maybe you got, hey, I, maybe maybe you got to talk a little more trash or something, man. Because that's what it looked like. Because I don't understand. <laughs> hey, like. Trust me, I'm not endorsing you to go out there and talk trash this year. I mean, you're gonna obviously, like I said, you're gonna have a lot of prime time games, especially being the Philadelphia Eagles. You're gonna get those yeah. matchups. Yeah. You're gonna get the, the you're gonna get the, the the prime time games, like I said. But sometimes, like I said, sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta be a little mouthy. You know, nah, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. You look at prime time Deion Sanders. You know what I mean? 
He had to do. He had to play with a little flair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, but like I said, if you're not getting the proper recognition that you deserve, then you gotta maybe you gotta find a way to get it. Even when you talk about the top, you know, top hundred guys in the league, you're ranked like what? I think what eighty third or something? Come on. So like, yeah, they, they, yeah. Pro Pro Football uh, Focus had you ranked as eighty third at your position. But like I said, Dion, uh, Tyrone, Matt, uh, Matthew, they came out and kind of defended you or whatever. But right. that's kind of ridiculous. That's for yeah, hey, whoever put that up there is ridiculous. That was crazy. Yeah, pro yeah football, man. Sometimes that job be that PFF be talking crazy. Sometimes I don't know what they right. be talking about. No, they yeah. need to be they're watching a whole different game. Yeah, they're watching a whole different game.